Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from the code called Course Schedule. It's a medium. We're going to jump right into it. There are a total of num courses you have to take labeled from zero to num courses minus one. You were given an array prerequisites where prerequisites of i equals a of i to b of i, which indicates that you must take course b of i first if you want to take course of a i. For example, the pair zero one indicates that to take course zero, you first have to take course one. Return true if you can finish all courses, otherwise return false. Okay, example one, we have num courses two, which means we have course zero and course one, and the prerequisites are one zero. So in order to take one, we have to take zero. So we can take both of these courses, right? We'll just take course zero first and then course one. So we output true. Example two, num courses is two again, and prerequisites now are one zero zero one. So in order to take course one, we have to take course zero, and in order to take course zero, we have to take course one. That's not possible, right? That's just an infinite cycle where it caught in a loop. So we return false and we have some constraints over here. Okay, so we're given two things, right? We're given num courses, which indicates the number of courses we need to take. And we're given an array of prerequisites that has all the prerequisite pairs that we need. And we just want to return whether or not we can take all the courses given to us. If we have no idea how to approach a problem, we always want to start off with really small basic examples and work our way up. So first example, say we have two courses, course zero and course one, and we have no prerequisites for either course. So we have just zero and one over here. Can we take both courses? Yes, right? We can just take course zero and we can take course one. But what if we still had two courses, zero and one, but now in order to take course one, we first have to take course zero. Can we take this? So to draw this out a little bit, we have course one here, but before we can take it, we have to take zero. So we can also still do this, right? We just take course zero and then we take course one. Now, what if we had two courses, zero, one, and in order to take course one, we have to take course zero, and in order to take course zero, we have to take course one. So this is going to look something like this. In order to take zero, we have to take one, and in order to take one, we have to take zero. So we're essentially just caught in this loop and we'll never be able to take a course because in order to take it, we have to take something else, and in order to take that, we have to take that first course. So here we would output false. Now, say we had four courses, zero, one, two, three, and this was our prerequisites array. What would this look like? So to visualize this, we have four courses over here, zero, one, two, three, and going through all the prerequisite pairs, right? In order to take zero, we have to take course two. In order to take course two, we have to take one. In order to take zero, we have to take one. So let's just go through all of our courses, zero to four, not inclusive, and see if we can take them. So first with course zero, we have to take one. So once we go to one, there's no other dependency, which means we can take one. And so we can take zero. And the second dependency of zero is course two. So can we take course two? So we go to two. And in order to take two, we have to take one. Now, one again has no dependency. So we can just take that, then take two and then take zero. And three has no prerequisites. So we can just go ahead and take it. So here we would output true. Now, when is the only time we would output false? We can always take any course that we want. The only time we can't is if there's a cycle because we're not able to take those courses. Otherwise, we can take as many courses as we wish to. So this becomes a cycle detection problem. Now, how do we solve this? Well, in order to solve this, we know we would have to go through every single course in num courses and make sure we are able to take that without having a loop. And in order to check that, we need to know all these edges and dependencies for every single course. So we can go ahead and just write that out. We can make a dictionary with all the courses being keys and a list storing all our dependencies. So for this example over here, that will look like the following, right? In order to take course zero, we have to take course two. And in order to take course zero, we also have to take course one. So one and two are our prerequisites. For course one, there is no prerequisite. We can just go ahead and take it. And course two, the only prerequisite is course one. Course three, again, has no prerequisite. So now for all these courses, we just want to check if there is a loop or not. So for course zero, we know we have some prerequisites, right? We want to make sure while we go through these prerequisites, we don't see courses we've seen before. So in this example, for instance, we had course zero and then we had course one. And then the dependency again was course zero. So what we want to do is just maintain all the courses we see as we go down a path. If we can go through a path, where the dependencies end, where we don't see courses we've seen before, we know there's no cycle. So for that, we're going to maintain a set just to keep track of everything we've seen so far. So I have my set over here. I'm going to call it seen, and I'm going to start off with course zero. So in the beginning, I've seen course zero, right? It's in my path so far. I want to make sure I don't come back to it somehow. So now that I've seen course zero, I just want to see what all the prerequisites of zero are. The first one over here is course one. 
So now I go to course one. Going to course one, I see that it's not already in my set. So we haven't hit a loop yet. But since we're on it now, I'm going to go ahead and add it to scene. So, so far in our path, we've seen zero and we've seen one. Now, since I'm at one, I want to see what the prerequisites for one are. And I see that there are no prerequisites, so I am able to take this course. So now, since I am able to take this course, I would just return and go back to zero. So the dependency path that had one over here as a prerequisite doesn't have a cycle. So this is clear so far. So we can actually remove this from scene since we're not on this path anymore. So now we want to check between zero and two. What if we go from zero to two to four back to zero? We're checking a whole new path and we want to make sure there's no cycle in it. So now since we're checking a new path, we're going to go ahead and go down that. Now we've seen zero and now we're going to check two. We go to two and we see that it's not already in our set. So we can go ahead and add it in. So I add two in here and now I check all the dependencies that two has. So now we go to one. I'm at one now. I see that it's not in scene, so I can go ahead and add this in here. And this has no prerequisites, right? This is an empty list, so I know that this course can be taken. So I will return to two saying that, yes, I can take course one. So this is no longer in our scene set. We're not working with a path with one anymore. We've returned from there. And now since all the dependencies and prerequisites for two are complete, we can also finish out two. We can remove this from the set and go back to our color. But since now we know that we can complete course two, what we can do is actually mark this as an empty list. So I'm going to go ahead and remove one from here. So next time, say I come across another dependency, say I have course four that depends on two. I don't have to go all the way down this path again, right? From four to two back to one, because I know I can do course two already. I've already checked it. So now any other course that has two as a dependency, we would just return at two. Two is empty and I go back to color zero. So I'm going to remove this from my set. This is no longer a path we're considering. And now we finished zero entirely. We know that this course can be achieved. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all these prerequisites. We no longer need to check this again for zero. So zero can be completed. I would remove this from set. Now we go back to one, right? This is all empty, which means we can do it. Go to two, this is empty, we can do it. And same with three, which means we can complete every single course from zero to num courses minus one. And that is it. So let's go ahead and code up this logic and then run through a super quick example. Okay, to code this up, what do we want to do? Well, first things first, we want to have a dictionary with all the courses that we need as keys and all the prerequisites as list values. So for that, I'm gonna initialize a default dictionary of lists. So from collections, import default dict. I'm going to call it prereqs. So prereqs is going to equal default dict of a list. And the benefit of using a default dictionary is that instead of defining every single key and initializing a value, we know that by default, all the values are going to be lists. So we can just go ahead and append right away. We don't need to add a key with a certain value. So now we can loop through all of the pairs in our prerequisite array. We know that the first number is going to be the course and the second number is going to be the prerequisite. So four course and prerequisites in prerequisites. We're going to add that to our dictionary. So prereqs of C, that's going to be a list. We're just going to append to that P. So now we have our dictionary complete. What's next? We're going to go through all of our courses and make sure we can actually complete them. This means can we complete all the prerequisites without running into cycles? So we're going to go down all the pads that the prerequisites have and any prerequisites that our prerequisites have so forth. So this is going to be a depth first search, right? So in order to do that, we are first going through every single course for course in range num courses. So we want to see if there's any cycle with our course in it. So let's make a helper function for that. I'm going to call that cycle. We basically want to check cycle with our course. Now, if there is a cycle, so if this is true, then we would return false. We can't complete all the courses. So if this is true, we return false. And if we go through every single course without returning a presence of a cycle, then we can complete every single course and we would return true. So return true. Now let's go ahead and define this function over here. Let's define cycle. We can do that right over here as a nested function. Now, in order to define it, we want to know what it would take in. It would take in our current course and something else we wanted to keep track of was scene, right? So let's initialize a scene set. So scene is my set over here and I'm going to pass this in as a parameter as well. And now to define this function. So cycle is going to take in course and scene. Now, what's the first thing that we do? The first thing we always do is check if our course is already in scene. If that is true, that means there's a cycle and we would return true. So if course in scene, if it's already in our set, we return true. If that's not the case, then we want to go ahead and add our course to scene. So scene.add 
ports. Now we've added it to our scene set and we want to check if we're able to complete our course. We want to go through all the prerequisites that our course has. For P in prereqs, this is the dictionary storing all the prerequisites for a course. So we're going to check this for the course that we're on. So what's stored at prereqs of course, that's going to be a list of all the prerequisites for this course. We're looping through all of that. And for every single prerequisite, we're going to call this function again. We're doing a depth first search, right? We're calling cycle with P and this updated scene that now holds this course. Now, if this returns true, there is a cycle. That means we found a cycle in one of our pads and we want to return true. So if this is true, then we return true. If it's false, we don't care. That's good. There is no cycle. Once we go through all of the prerequisites without returning true, it means there is no cycle and we can complete all these courses. So now what we want to do, we know that we can complete this course. We no longer need to check it again. So we're going to assign its prerequisites to be the empty list. So prereqs, of course, is going to now be the empty list. We no longer need to go down all the paths. And since we're done with our course, we're also going to remove it from scene over here. So scene.remove or course. And finally, all we have to do is return false. There is no presence of a cycle. And this is it. So now we can go ahead and submit this. One time error, prerequisites are not defined. That's because this is nowhere near the spelling. Let's go ahead and update that. Okay, now go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now, before leaving, let's just run through a super quick example. So we're able to visualize this and see exactly what our code does line by line. Okay, so this is our example. We have four as our num courses and the following prerequisites. All right, to visualize this, I'm going to draw it out. So we have courses zero to three and all the corresponding prerequisites. Now, going through this line by line, right? The first thing we do is define a prereqs default dictionary. So that's over here. So now we're going to go through every single course and prereq in our prerequisites array and add that to our dictionary. So the first one we come across is zero, two. So I have key zero and two appended to my array. I go back in this loop. I'm now at two, one. I have one as a prereq for two. Then I go back in here. One is added as a prerequisite for zero. And then finally, we have three, zero. So now our prereqs dictionary is complete and we go ahead and define function cycle over here and we initialize scene to be the empty set. So now we're at line 18. We're looping through every single course in range from zero to num courses. And this is not inclusive. So we're going to go from zero to three. The first thing that we're on is zero and we're calling this function right here. So we're going to call this with course zero and the empty set of scene. So we go into this function called cycle and we make a check if course is in scene. So is zero in our set? It's not. We don't return true. And now what we do is go ahead and add it into scene. So now scene has seen course zero and we're going to be looping through for the prereqs of course. What are all the prerequisites for course zero? That's one and two. And we're just looping through it, right? So the first one we come across is one, which means we're going to call this again with our scene and now course one. So we go back into cycle and we make a check is one in scene. It's not. So we don't return true. And now we go ahead and add it in. So, so far we've seen zero and one in our path. Now we want to loop through all the prerequisites for our course. There's nothing to go through. So we're out of this for loop and we assign prereqs of course to be the empty list. So now one is the empty list. Now the next line over here is to remove one from scene and we return false. So we go back to our caller and return false over here. This output over here of one and scene isn't true. We don't return true and we're back in this for loop. This time P is two and we're just repeating this again, right? We're now checking the path of zero and two. We know that this is a prereq over here. So going in here, we see that two is not in scene. So we go ahead and add it in. And now we're going to loop through all the prerequisites for two. So two is prerequisites are just one. So we're calling this again with one. We're back in cycle with one and scene. And we see that one is not in scene. And this is because, right, when we called it earlier, once we were done, we removed it because that complete path was done. Otherwise, if we hadn't done that, we would have wrongfully seen a cycle. So since we have removed it so far, this path is only zero two. And now since we're at one, we can go ahead and add one to scene. We're following this path over here, zero to two to one. Now we want to check all the prerequisites of one. We know that there are none over here. It's empty. So we don't go into this for loop. We just keep it empty. We remove it from course and return false. So moving this from course, we return false over here to its caller and we return back to course two. This returned false, we can't return over here and there are no more prerequisites for two to go through. So since we're done for this for loop for two, we go ahead and assign this to be the empty list. So now two is going to look like this in our dictionary. We can go ahead and remove this from set 
and return false to its caller. So that was a for loop that zero was in. And we just finished the last element of that loop. So we exit out of this as well and set prerequisites of zero to be the empty list as well. Now that that's done, we remove it from set and return false to the caller. So we return false over here, which means this if condition would not be true. And we go back into this for loop. So now we just finished course zero. We know that we can complete it without any cycles. We want to check course one. So we're going to call one with the empty set scene. We go in here. Course is not in scene, so we don't return true. We go ahead and add one to set. And we loop through all the prerequisites, which again, there are none. Make this empty, remove this from set because there's nothing to really check and return false. There's no cycle for one either. We're back in this for loop and now we want to check course two. So we're calling cycle with two and scene. Two is not in scene. We don't return true. We go ahead and add it to scene and we go through all of its prerequisites. There are none. That's because we already processed two when we were going through zero earlier. This means that we know we can do two and there's no point in going through that entire loop again, right? So we skip this for loop because we mark this as empty and we remove it from scene and return false. So no cycle for two either. We can complete course two. The last iteration of the for loop, we are now at course three. Three is not in scene. We don't return true. We go ahead and add it though. And we go through all of its prereqs. Now, looping through this, right? The only prereq it has is zero. So we call cycle with zero and scene. So we're back in here. Zero is not in scene. So we don't return true. And we go ahead and add zero to this path. And we go through zero's prereqs. Now, initially it had a lot of prereqs. We again, no longer need to go through that because we updated this once we were done. So we skip this for loop, keep it empty prereq list for it and just remove it from our set. So we're done with all the prereqs for three. We mark this as empty, remove this from course and return false. There is no cycle for three as well. So since we finished looping through without returning false, we're out of this for loop and now we can return true. We can complete every single course from zero to num courses minus one. The only time we couldn't have done that was if there would be a cycle. So if we had zero, one and one zero, we would have called this with zero added it to our scene set. Then once we called one, added one to our scene set, gone through its prerequisites, which would have been zero again. So we would have seen that in our set, in which case we would have returned true for a presence of a cycle. And if this was true, we would have returned false that we can't complete all the courses. And space and time complexity for this, right? If the dump courses is N and prerequisites is length M, our time and space complexity would be n plus m, the number of courses we have and the pairs that we have between them. So this is going to be the vertices plus all the edges between them. So we just went ahead and solved course schedule. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.